This is Wrestling Nostalgia with Dave Dynasty. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Wrestling Nostalgia. I am your host, Dave Dynasty. Uh, the episodes are dropping a little later today, um, but that is that's okay, right? That that happens, and it does allow us to uh, catch kind of a late breaking news item that just occurred today. So let's talk about a couple things. First of all, uh, we have a great interview coming up with Dave Sullivan. Uh, you may know him, you know, as the Equalizer, Captain Ron, uh, but then most notably probably in this WCW run as Dave Sullivan or Evad Sullivan, uh, you know, quote unquote Kevin Sullivan's brother. So we have an interview with Dave coming up. But let's talk about a couple of uh, a couple of wrestling deaths. Uh, it's always it's it's always hard to talk about this kind of stuff, but you 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 do want to pay tribute. Uh, first of all, we did receive the news a day or two ago that uh, that Ole Anderson had passed away. Ole Anderson, obviously one of the most important and influ- influential men in modern wrestling, uh, whether it be as a talent, as a booker, what what have you. Ole, you know his fingerprints and everything were in all kinds of stuff. I always I always liked Ole. Uh, as a talent, right? I always thought he was very believable. It was very, very tough. Uh, you know, I always loved, you know, him and Arn as the Minnesota Wrecking Crew teaming up uh, and lots of great stuff. You know, you hear you hear all kinds of hilarious stories about Ole and his, his, you know, that quote unquote crusty attitude behind the scenes and everything else. And and it makes for uh, makes for some really entertaining stories. So, uh, you know, Ole, Ole will be missed, right? I know he hadn't really been involved in wrestling for some years and whatnot, but uh, obviously, his his influence was was all over wrestling uh, through the '80s, uh, particularly and up into the '90s. And then I also just received word today that uh, that Virgil had uh, passed away. Mike Jones, uh, Soul Train Jones, whatever you want to you know, whatever you want to call him. Obviously, most known as Virgil. Uh, apparently, you know, he'd been battling an illness. I'm I'm not sure, but you know, and if you want to talk about somebody with with entertaining stories, Virgil's right up there too, right through. There's always the joke of, uh, of of Virgil, you know, shilling pictures and everything, and his autograph everywhere, anywhere and everywhere, uh, and it's he really, I you know, leaned into that and kind of made it a thing, and and all the you know all of his little gimmick things he did with talking about the meat sauce and this and that. And he was just you know really an entertaining character. Um, you know, it seems like pretty much everybody within wrestling or around wrestling or a fan of wrestling it seemed like so many had a, a Virgil story, right? Because he was out there everywhere, you know. Like I said, would no matter what the convention or whatever, it seemed like Virgil was, was there in some capacity. And uh, so, you know, I hate, hate to hear that as well. Uh, both, both those guys passing on, uh, you know, and I send out good vibes to, to all their friends and family and, and their fans and everybody to through that difficult time. So, all right, well, let's take a break. Um, oh, wait, one more news story. I want to talk. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if whether you guys have seen on Facebook, but uh, my buddy, Brad Drake, uh, who's the, you know, the, the, the leader of the WFIA that I am on the board of has, has picked up the trademark for the world wrestling association. Of course, that's near and dear to my heart, right? Cause that's Dick the bruisers promotion uh, based in the Midwest. And, and Brad's going to start running uh, some events under the WWA banner. He, he's got uh, I'll have a little more information next show, but he does have one, I believe on the calendar. I don't have that in front of me, but uh, so go check them on a Facebook, look up world wrestling, association and, and support them as things start to develop there in the Midwest uh, with a, a new incarnation of the WWA. Uh, I, you know, I have, I have a lot of faith in Brad and that he will, will pay tribute to the history of the name and the history of the, of the, the company before, uh, you know, he, he, he's very, very honorable, very respectful of wrestling history. And uh, I, I have a feeling that he'll do the name right. And it should be, it should be great stuff. So if, Check that out, and if you're in the area when the shows start popping up, uh, make sure you attend those. Uh, I I intend to be uh, you know as involved as I can. I now of course live on the East Coast, but uh, you know see, again, seeing how the WWA is so dear to my heart um, and my interest, I I will you know I will be as involved as I can uh, in this this promotion and in helping to to spread the word to help support uh, and everything else I can. I know they've they've named. Uh, George Shire as president of operations, or, or I'm not sure the specific title, but George uh, going to be involved there. George is a great guy, obviously, friend of the show, friend of mine. Uh, he'll be back on in the future. So lots of great things that are happening. So go look them up on Facebook, like their page, and follow along as things develop on that front. Now, with that said, now let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll have that interview with Dave Sullivan. So stick around. If you like horror movies, be sure to check out Dave Dynasty and Ike Isaacs on the Listen to Their Screams Horror Podcast. It is available on all podcast platforms, and 
and on social media at Listen to Screams. That is Listen, the number two in Screams. And welcome back to Wrestling Nostalgia. This time I'm being joined by Dave Sullivan. Dave, how are you? Good day. How are you? I'm very good. Dave, uh, Dave, Dave Sullivan, of course, is one of the names you're known by. Uh, but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your career and everything else. Now, you grew up in Nebraska, correct? And you played football in high school, college, and into the USFL. So what happened? Why did you stop playing football? Uh, well, I I did. I Because USFL went defunct, so I got into coaching at first. Came back to UNL here and was a GA and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, yeah, like you said, you started coaching, doing some things. Uh, th- did you enjoy the switch to that side of the sport and doing the coaching? Uh, it was something different because I enjoyed playing quite a bit, and it was, you know, but it was it was time, you know, y'all. <laughs> Father time gets us all, especially in sports. So you just it was time for me to move on, and and so I started because I had a degree and, and got my degree there, and I was starting to work on my master's. So I was a graduate assistant, and I started the strength program there at UNO at the time. Yeah, and then you met Harley Race, which led to you decide uh, to decide to give pro wrestling a try. So tell us that story about how did you meet Harley Race, and, and how did that happen? Well, he, I was at Warshburn at that time, and he had a, a young man that was a, uh, his son was a wide receiver at Blue Valley. So I was recruiting him, and we started talking, but I had a kind of a thing and wanted to do it too, because when I was up in St. Cloud as an assistant, I got a chance to watch Andre and all them guys had come to St. Cloud for a match at our school for a fundraiser. And at that time, Andre was there, Jesse the Body, um, uh, in Patera, all the guys at Ganya's and Brunzel. So it was quite a show cut. And I got to be a head of security with a football kid. So, I mean, it was kind of fun. It was enjoyable to see. And you got to see the guys and, under, and get a little more of it. It's kind of cool to be a wrestler. So I, that's my first interest. Besides, I watched it when I was a kid quite a bit growing up. Yeah. It, it, you, wound up, you wound up training with Lynn Denton, obviously the legendary grappler. So how mm-hmm. did how did you go from meeting some of those guys in Harley Race to to meeting and, and training with Lynn Denton? Well, I started there in Kansas City. I was at Warshburn with with mm-hmm. Geigel, okay, with Bobby, mm-hmm. Bob Geigel, which is a legendary legendary Midwest wrestler and famous right. guy, and he got me started. And so they sent me up to start working with uh, with uh, uh, with uh, P, with a PNW with Roddy and Lynn and, and Don Owens. And so then Don would, and then that agreement was that I would finish my training. Yeah, like you said, you went to the Pacific Northwest, and they started, when you started wrestling, they started calling you the Equalizer. Uh, Correct. So who, Correct. who gave you that name? Was that just because you were doing the, going to team with, with the grappler? Did they feel like you needed well, a similar name, or how did that happen? Kinda, it was kind of Geigel's idea, a little bit, and then, then, and then grappler took it into more with the character once I got up there. Yeah, like I said, you you teamed with Grappler. You guys were called the Wrecking Crew up there. You won the tag right. titles. Uh, so how was that just kind of, do you feel that was kind of just part of your training and development was teaming with with the Grappler so that you could continue to learn from him, grow? You know, even when you were in a match, you were on the apron watching him, and he was kind of helping guide you. Was that just part of your growth and, and learning process? I, yeah, oh, yeah. No question. No question. I mean, there's a lot for me to still learn because I was still real green in the business, and we had a lot of, you know, Roddy was there helping, and you had Billy Jack Haynes, and of course, Crush was there also, and, and Brian Adams. So, I mean, we had a great outfit at that time, a lot of big guys. So, they really kind of, you know, Grappler was the main guy, but you learn from all of them as you watch them, and you're out there every day working and going from show to show. Yeah. And obviously, the Pacific Northwest uh, is a, uh, it, it, you know, it's talked about, but not, I don't know, maybe not enough because it's, it's probably, not probably, it, it could be the longest running territory in the USA. I mean, it lasted longer than about anything than Memphis, I think. Uh, being yes. one of the last. So yes. what was it, what was it like working for Don Owens? He was a great guy. Of course, you know, he was a big cattle farmer there in Oregon too. Uh-huh. So he and his son and then Andy and Sandy Barr kind of, you know, Sandy helped out the territory he rep, but we also did his towns too. So that was kind of how it made it for a week. We do some of Don's towns. We do some of Sandy's towns and we have the main event every, 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 I think it was every Saturday night we had the main event there because yeah, we were in Eugene, UC on Friday night, and we did the TV every Saturday night. So Don was a great guy to work for. It was a great outfit. It really was. It's it's so sad that you know that the territory business went. I know people made some big money, and I know that's what it's all about. But the yeah. territory business was kind of cool. It really was. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even when things started to go national, I think there's still you know, I think it kind of went with the way of TV, right? I mean, local TV started to started to dissipate and die out as everything went national with cable and everything else. So 
Uh, now you now you now you're downloading every you know now it's totally <laughs> now, cable, now, now cable's becoming a thing of the past. Yeah, it's becoming obsolete. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, everybody talks about you know Vince McMahon and this and that and blah 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 and how he talks. I mean, there is truth to that. But I think I kind of think the territories, in my opinion, at least, I think it was bound to happen no matter what, just be, because of the nationalization of of TV and everything else. It was bound that someone was going to was well, going to go national. I mean, that's why Ted and that's why Ted did it, too, with the WCW, right. because he bought the he bought the NWA from the Crockett's. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just a kind of a, a thing of the past, you know, just the you know, just like, I mean, local TV in general. Right. You don't have the local kids programs and, you know, local news is not even as prominent anymore. I mean, it's, everything's, everything's on a national level. It's, so it's national not just wrestling. You got a question. National yeah, well. you got a question too. <laughs> yeah. You got to kind of question anything anymore. Don't you? <laughs> yeah, you do. But the, uh, and then around 1990, you went to Europe and you retro wrestle for the, the catch wrestling association, which is kind of, you know, it's a very prominent known group in Europe. So how, how did that happen that you started to go over to Europe and appear for them? Well, big band saw tapes of me, Van Vader, and uh, Otto needed a big heel, so uh, he called he called me up, and Otto offered me a position there, so I took it, and Van recommended me. So Van Vader, that's when Van Vader and I became first got to be friends because I'd go over there. He got me over there because you know he's he trained up in Minnesota, so we knew a lot of the sure. same guys, Norton yeah. and all them guys. So I, he got me a shot over there, and then I you know I stayed over there on two tours. So and then from there I went to England and all that stuff, and Japan and South Africa. So I got to stay overseas for quite some time and wrestle. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously Vader was very big for them, right? He was their their champ for a while and everything oh, else. Oh yeah, um, he, he, yeah. When him and Otto wrestled, it was huge. I mean, we went yeah. to a big huge arena to wrestle because Otto was still really over in Europe, and Big Van would come in, and it would just it be, they'd be hanging from the rafters. Yeah, and, and they called you the Barbarian over there. So was there a reason for that change of the name, or why? Have you, why the Barbarian? I th- I just think because the gear I was wearing, the fur and all that stuff, and the fur boots, he just thought it fit it. And they, it would it, 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 the people in Germany hated Barbarians. So it kind of went wrong <laughs> right, with that. Like, he was doing his stuff. So that's how I think that's why he decided on that. Because then I went to England. I was Hawkwind the Barbarian. So right, you yeah. know. And then, yeah, and then I, I, you know, so I mean. I think that's when I was in South Carolina, South Africa, too, if I remember right. And then, of course, I'd go to Japan. I was equalizer. So I had the same gear, yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, it was, you're wrestling for Auto Ones, who's obviously, you know, I'm a former AWA champion. There's a lot of talk right. about how that reign happened and what whatnot with that. Do, do you have any – Auto Ones is, is quite a character, right? A lot of people don't talk about oh, him. Uh, he's but, a uh, do, I, yeah. Do you have any good stories or a fun story or anything about Auto Ones and, and working for him? Oh, just that, you know, he, he was a character. He loved to give the boys rib the boys a little bit. We'd get him back once in a while. But oh, I, I had an injury there. I, I fell wrong in the ring, and I I separated my shoulder. And so there was no doctor in the venue because we are in some small town. So he put me in his Mercedes, strapped me in. And, you know, there's no speed limit over there. So we must yeah. have been going 140 miles out to get to the hospital. And so we get in there, you know, and the European medicine is different, different than ours is, you're not ble- if you're bleeding, they take you first no matter what. Otherwise, you wait your turn. And so I asked Wada, what just get a blade out and cut me? And he goes, No, Bill, we're not we're not gonna do the business here. And so <laughs> we laughed and we had to wait for it. <laughs> yeah, but I always was- got he's always he was always good to me and he was always a great I mean he was again, I was very fortunate he was a good promoter to work for. Yeah, I always envisioned that uh, that Otto was kind of like Big Daddy in England, that right everywhere he went, everybody knew him. In that area, yeah. right? That he was a big oh, yeah. star. Is, yeah. that, is that true? I mean, was he was he, he like the he big like, star, the big draw? Yeah, he was. He was like Arnold Schwarzenegger. As a matter of fact, he knew Arnold from growing up. So I mean, he was like they're pretty close to the same age, if I remember right. He might be a little bit older than Arnold, but yeah, man, I mean, he was in, in that in that Graz where he all grew up in Austria and, and Vienna. He was yeah, he's like Arnold. He was huge. Yeah, like I said, he you know a lot of people. It's like I don't know. I don't want that to get talked about enough. It's one of those characters. It's again, it's a. Each territory or each region or you know country or whatever it is had had that that guy, and Otto right. Otto was it over there, and uh, no question, yeah. And then when uh, back in the U.S., you 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 worked for Global, the Global Wrestling Federation, and you wrestled right. as Ca- Captain Ron. So describe right. Captain Ron to me, and and why this? Why I mean, why not stick with what you were doing? What was well, Captain Ron about? Well, you were me and my me and Price. 
And I'm trying to remember the referee that was out there at that time. I talked to him once. I've been, I always remember faces by Cam, James Beard. There you go. Yeah. We're on the plane final. Then the movie or watch the movie, Captain Ron. They said, you know, you got to come down to our territory. You can play that character or character and come on down to our territory and do that. And so then uh, I think it was what Akbar was in charge. He was a booker that time. So I went down there and started working down there with those guys and travel around with them. And it was kind of, it was cool. I've enjoyed yeah. it. I had a lot of fun down in Texas. So yeah, uh, uh, they were a good organization. But it was, it was, a, it was like that guy, but I was still a big heel working with the yeah. heels, Price and all those guys. Yeah. Captain Ron was, uh, was it Kurt Russell in that movie? I think it was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's weird how stuff like that happened back in those days where you go someplace and it's like, you know, you you worked all these places to establish yourself, you know, as the equalizer and this and that. And then they want to throw something like that on you. It's just, it, it's funny how someone looks at you and that's, oh, there's Captain Ron. It's a, mm-hmm. it's kind of unique. But, uh, but Global, Global was a little, I, I think it's a little ahead of its time in some right. They had some really great talent. Obviously, you know, Lightning mm-hmm. Kid and, and uh, Jerry Lynn were doing some extraordinary things there. They were on ESPN, right? The last wrestling promotion on ESPN. So they had national coverage. What do you right. feel like that was a that was a big lift for your career at that time to have that national coverage on ESPN? Yeah, I think it helped me tremendously. It helped me, you know, with going to Japan and other places, and also you know the United States. And then I think it helped me get noticed with Dusty down to WCW. And then I see how I was in Puerto Rico. I was wrestling over there for those guys and living with Dick Murdoch, which him and Dusty go all the way back to the AWA as a tag yeah. team together. Yeah. Matter of fact, when they lived in Omaha, they had they had that jackass. I don't know if you remember that. But they had a jackass, and they in the winter time had stayed in their house. And he said it's shit all over the place. Yeah. that was just, yeah. that was as big that was as big as every Dick Murdoch about living in Omaha. But yeah, it's, uh, that helped me with Dusty too. Yeah, you know, man, everybody everybody talks Dusty Rose, right? They think of Dusty Rose, and you think you know prime WCW and NWA years. But man, I tell you what, I if I had to see Dusty Rose and get some more tape and go back in time, I want to see. That Dick Murdoch, Dusty Rhodes, the Texas Outlaw stuff, because those guys, yeah. man, were just—they were just kicking they ass. Were, they were just having fun. They drinking were over, beer. <laughs> and they were, over, and that's when I was growing up. So they were big here. I mean, they were over big time. Yeah, it's I mean, through, the whole, through the whole AWA. Yeah, I mean, Dick Murdoch kind of—he kind of kept that sad. He was like that pretty much throughout his entire career. He really didn't change yes. much. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> tell me, ruin with him. It was just like that all the time. <laughs> yeah, it was a, and, uh, it was an adventure every day. Yeah, they always they always say he had that one time had an endorsement deal with Coors Light. They were just providing him a beer. And it's like you always wonder how did how did that even happen? How did I how did Dick Murdoch not get an endorsement deal with Coors Light? <laughs> and then wherever we went out, we always drink Coors Light. Always. <laughs> oh man, and, and, and like you mentioned, man, you've been all over the world, right? We talked about Germany and Austria, and you were in Japan, you were in the UK, Puerto Rico. Did you have a favorite country to wrestle outside of when you were in the US? That was there a particular country that you really liked? Europe. Europe's really cool. I like the, you know, their lifestyle's nice over there overall. And it's, it's people are mostly very cool and kind like we are here. So, I mean, I, I did enjoy Europe. I mean, I could live in Europe very easily. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's pretty well. I mean, what other jobs do you get paid? You know, it, it, you know, you get to travel the world and, and see some of the yeah. things you get to see and go to some of the places you get to so it, it, it's part of the job. And, um, and, and like you mentioned, right, you got in with, with Dusty, right? You end up, you end up WCW. Uh, you started out, you know, you were as, wrestling as the equalizer. You were teaming with Rick Rude, Paul Orndorff, and different things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. Kind of like a body, right? Kind of like a bodyguard tag team type thing, right? I mean, you were kind of mm-hmm. like the, like their muscle guys. But then in 1994, this is probably your highest profile position you ever had, and, and what you became known for, you, you became Dave Sullivan, right? The, the brother of Kevin Sullivan. So, yeah, correct. Was this a Kevin ideal? Because I'm assuming he was booking and, and everything at this time. And how did that yeah. come up? That that hey, you're gonna play my brother, my brother Dave. Uh, they they were they come up to me before he even was coming in and let them know they were gonna approach him about this and make us. It. And I guess when he talked to them, he brought up the idea of being a tag team and being my brother, me being his brother. And they kind of liked the idea at the office. Uh, who I think I can't remember when Bishop, you know, Bishop was yet in charge or was still Bill, Bill. Um, what was his name? Bill. Out of the Oklahoma Territory. Oh, Bill Watts. Yeah. Yeah, Bill Watts. I can't remember yeah. if it was part of Bill Watts or when Bishop took over. And uh, and but they come up the idea because uh, Mike Graham was very good friends with, uh, and so was Greg Ganya with with uh, with Kevin. They've done a lot of business with him, so Kevin kind of uh, they kind of come up the idea together, and then they agreed. And they made the deal with Kevin and myself, and 
we, he came in, he started helping with booking and we started being together. Yeah. And like I said, this is probably the run you're most known for, right? Most people obviously remember you now, uh, you know, but you were, you were portrayed as having dyslexia and you often yes. pronounce your name as Evad. Uh, you're, right. you know, you're being, you're being picked on by some other wrestlers and Kevin came to your assistance. What, what did you think of that part of the character that the, the dyslexia, the, the kind of that, that timid side of it? What, what did you think of that? Cause you here, you play this heel, this real <laughs> outlandish, you know, not outlandish, but you know, this, whatever you want to say in your face, tough guy. And here you are mm-hmm. playing now this. I mean, what, what did you think of that side of it? it? It was a different approach for you. It was, it was, it was quite a change from what I'd asked, been, been asked to do all, wherever I was at. And it was something new. So I, <laughs> it took a little bit of work and coaching to do it, but Kevin was real good at with that, helping me. And so was his, at that time, his wife, Nancy, Nancy uh, mm-hmm. Sullivan, who helped me with it too. She had some yeah. good ideas. She was really good in the business too. So, I mean, uh, and they kind of helped me with my character and it kind of developed as we went. Yeah, but it, mean, was you got, it was a change. It was a change because it's a difference going from a heel to a face. Yeah, right. I mean, you, and you got a lot of sympathy with with the crowd and the audience and, and everything. And, and, you know, they really got behind you. And then, and then Hulk Hogan came in to WCW mm-hmm. and, and they started adding to your character to portray you as, as you were his biggest fan, which started mm-hmm. causing some problems with you and Kevin, right? Because they mm-hmm. portrayed, you know, Kevin disliked Hogan. You were this big supporter. But, but like I said, this was, I mean, your biggest, I mean, you were teaming with Hogan and Sting and everything else. Uh, right. Very high pro. This this really had to be a fun part of your career for some it of these, these key matches you were getting at that time. Yes, yes, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, and I enjoyed the opportunity. And uh, yeah, the traveling and working with all the different. Now I worked with all the heels instead of the baby faces, and it was different because you know you get a good heel, they would they would run the match. You just get out and work. Yeah, and, and I mean, how back how, in that back in the day, you didn't have to plan that much. Sure. Yeah. How how receptive was Hogan to this, right? I mean, when when you when this was pitched to him and TV, was I mean, was he receptive? Did he did he like the idea? Or at the be, at the beginning, he really liked it. Yeah, it was part of him and Kevin talked, and they they, they approached me on it. Yeah, and, so and I mean, you know, I mean, they both and we were on the bus in Germany together, and this is you know he we went, but he got on the bus with us one day and sit down and talked to me and Kevin, and we kind of took the character from there. Yeah, I mean, you you know, you had, I mean, there's matches that were featured in Vader, right, which you had a history with, and all these all these right. guys you knew. I mean, and that spun out. You had some memorable feuds, obviously, with Kevin Sullivan, right, spinning out of the, right. the kind of the split between you two. You had a feud right. with da- Diamond Dallas Page over Kimberly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mm-hmm. had a feud with Big Bubba Rogers over a rabbit. And yeah. uh, <laughs> so what, what stands out with you with all that? Because, you know, there's some wackiness in there, right? There was with the rabbit and different things. But like I said, it's all kind of kind of fun stuff. Um, what was it like working with those guys and, and what stands out from that kind of that whole run there for you? Oh, it was, you know, you'd go back and you think about it, but you know, we were busy all the dang time. She didn't have a whole lot of time to think, but you know, I, I really enjoyed it other than being a face, but I, I really enjoyed working with all those different people and how and you learned a lot on even learn more heel stuff because you work with, I had an opportunity to work with some top, top heels, which made it. My heel, my heel ability better too. So I mean, I it was a great opportunity in my life, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, like you know, the stuff with Dallas, you know, Diamond Dallas Page with Kimberly kind of harkened back to some of the stuff WWF did, you know, in the eighties with uh with George Animal Steel and Elizabeth and my and her, Elizabeth, yes. Yeah, yeah. did uh, did did you kind of did you take any influence from that? Did you go back and look at some of oh, that? Yeah. How, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, how George did it. Now, I, I know George's characters were different. He'd go on by the bat where mine was the kind character, kind of offbeat. Yeah. So I had to do things a little bit different, but it was very similar, yes. Yeah, and like, yeah. <laughs> they, they they played off some of the Bubba Rogers, right, with you, you know, you having the yeah. rabbit, and I think Bubba had a, they, they said he had a... Allergic reaction to <laughs> Allergic reaction, <laughs> which is, you know, again, a little, kind of goofy, kind of, a little bit, but, you know, it, it is what it man is. Was, but... Boss Man's one of the best guys to work with. He's Absolutely. Really good. That's what I was going to say. He's a I mean, great, one of the finest human beings in the business, too. Yeah, everybody talks about how good a guy he is and how good a worker. I mean, how such a natural, especially for that for his size. Um, right, because he's and, a big boy too. Yeah, that, that that you know that had to be that had to be fun working with him. Yes, it was a lot of fun. I agree. I really enjoyed Bubba. Yeah, he's a big boss man. But he's a great guy. I mean, he yeah. really was a good friend. Yeah, and then you, then you what what led to you leaving WCW there in '96? Did you just kind oh, of feel you like know that? that? No, you know what happened. You never watched Kevin inter- Kevin's interview? Uh, not well, maybe yeah, but I want to hear you tell the story. <laughs> I, 
I didn't know any of it. I mean, I don't know why they, you know, one day I just got a pink slip and said I was done. I don't know why. Nobody said a word. Kevin really didn't talk much about it. That the, I didn't find out much about it till later on, like a lot of like a lot, like a lot of people did. So it it was kind of it was kind of different at the beginning. Yeah, because I didn't know. I could nobody ever told me. You know, Bischoff didn't know, but then all of a sudden, Kevin kind of uh, kind of spilled the beans later on. So I just went back and and I, I moved into Arkansas at that time. I think Oklahoma in that area. Because I had a position, and then I also started working. Then I worked, started working those territories, and then I still went down to Puerto Rico and Japan from then too. Till I finally got a coaching job up here in Dana College, and then I completely got out of it. And now I'm kind of coming back, helping out as manager of these independent spots up here in Nebraska and South Dakota. So I mean, it's just it was a, kind of a interesting time when that all happened because you really didn't know why. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of times, right, it is hard to tell, right? Just a sudden shift in direction, whatever it might be. It can, it, who knows, yeah. right? A different guy then, in a different position that just doesn't like you, you for find, whatever reason. <laughs> then Kevin spills the beans and Arn spills the beans, too. He said, yeah. Well, go ahead go ahead and tell deal. that, though. What, what did Kevin spill the beans on? Oh, uh, that whole, one of the matches, when I was a whole commandic, this is before I turned uh, with a green outfit, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, I had the robe and all that. I, I don't, I can't know one of his boys. I don't know which one it was. Come back after one of the shows that I was out there working. I think with, I don't know for sure. And he, and people, one of the one of the marks said he looks a lot like Hogan. So he went back and told Hogan that. And so Hogan went to the next. Because Hogan back then, you don't realize he had full, pretty much full control. Yep, sure. Okay, and you know, it was in his contract. <laughs> and so, um, creative control is what it was called. Yep. And uh, and uh, he just and he just come back. And from then on, Hogan went to kill the gimmick and it was over big. I mean, it was doing well. I mean, it was up there in the yep. ratings and everything. It was right up there with him and Sting and all that stuff. And Kevin and yep. Arnold met it. Kevin and yep. Arnold met it. Yep. I mean, yeah, because both of them on the both of them were on the yep. booking committee at that time. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, you know, I mean, Hogan's done that many times. Right. He just he he has. have someone infringing. You know, he didn't. He's protective. Uh, to the point of but it was his it, idea. It was yeah, I know. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I guess yeah, I guess he wouldn't like someone that uh, quote unquote looked like him. I guess. <laughs> but I don't look that much. I look more like no. Kevin than I do him. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, well. Uh, let, let's that's just. What, I mean, that's what that's what Kevin and Arn said. He don't even look like you. No, and, it, and it's funny. Even yeah, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not not just to bash on Hogan, but. You you hear modern your current interviews with him, man. He yeah, either he he embellishes to the the point of being ridiculous sometimes, right? His yeah, the way he tells stories is just clearly clearly not true. And uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It it, it yeah. is what it is. But uh, it is but like what it is. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like you, know, you said, you know, you did some football coaching, got things like that. Uh, you, but you like you said, you done some managing, some things like that. Is it just a Man, that love of wrestling, it's in your blood. Yeah. You, you, you yeah. just got to get, you, you like to stay involved. Yeah, you can't help it. You know, I mean, it's it's there. It, and I would have done it probably longer if that would have happened with them guys. So, I mean, you know, so it's just what happened. One of those things where you kind of, from there on, you just move on with your life and you keep going. Yeah, when you look back on your career, like I said, most people remember that, you know, the Dave Sullivan run in WCW, but you've done so much other stuff. When you look back, what what's come kind, of, kind of your fondest memories of, of your career? Just all the good, all the good people I've met in the business. I really have. I met some awesome people and, and, and people that are just great people. And traveled with a lot of them, and like the, like you brought up the grappler and all those people like that. So they're you know all special people, and I you know, yeah that's what you enjoy the most is the camaraderie. Yeah, is there is there anybody that you're you're, you're kind of still in good contact with and, and communicate oh, with? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, Grappler, Dave Finley, we still talk because I really became good friends with him in Europe and England. Yeah. And the Grappler. And then I'll, I'll talk to uh, uh, those are probably the only two I still really talk to because a lot of my friends that I hung with have passed away. Yeah. You know, Brian Adams. I mean, I go right through the list. I mean, Rowdy's gone. I mean, there's a lot of guys. I mean, and I, I was never part of, even though I hung out with Rick Flair, I never was part of his inner circle. So. Or Hogan's inner circle, but but I I still consider Rick a friend, but I just don't talk to him that much anymore. Yeah, and uh, and, and, again, and Dusty and Dusty Rhodes, I've always considered him great friends, and they you know a lot of them are gone. Yeah, absolutely. 
And, and again, I, I'm going to bring up something here. And if you don't want to comment, I understand. Or if you don't feel like you could, you, you, you uh, obviously have a history in the Pacific Northwest. And there's obviously a lot in the news right now about Billy Jack Haynes. And, and, what and happened what, now? You know, well, uh, oh, you haven't heard recently? No. Uh, Billy Jack Haynes, uh, he killed his wife. <laughs> That's what's in the news oh now. My God. And, oh and my yeah, there's God. not... Um, I don't see that a lot of details have been released yet on, you know, but obviously Billy Jack Haynes has had his issues, right? There's yes, lots of things, especially how much you can, I mean, what, what was your experience with Billy Jack? Did you ever have that kind of period where you're like, man, what is up with this guy? And, and, and did no. you ever notice some of this behavior or is this no, a was, thing? It's, no, I, I, we always heard he was, uh, you know, a tough, uh, tough guy, yeah. but he was all, he was always good to we were always good friends and i had we worked in brian and i worked him in a tag team him and rip oliver and so mm -hmm. we i worked with billy he was good very talented we had a lot of fun in the match you know uh, i always i don't i hate rumors but joy's heard he had issues with drinking and stuff and stuff and yeah he, he would yeah. he would drink he'd be a different person but i never saw that so i can't comment on it you know what i'm saying those are yeah. just rumors that i heard but i didn't know he killed his wife yeah, I mean, this is this is very recent. I mean, this is we're talking within the past month. This is all happening okay. and in and, and, and developing. And uh, and again, I don't even know if there's been an official statement released, but it has been verified that it's him. But uh, there's no details released and everything. Like I said, though, in recent years, there's just been some some odd behaviors, right, with with interviews gotcha. and, and different things. So it's I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell um, what what's going on there. I'm sure there's a lot of factors, obviously that that you know. Uh, would uh, pertain to that, uh, but let's let's go back. Yeah, yeah bad I mean, form. yeah, right. I mean, and, and his wife, of course, and their family and all the relatives. That's not hard on. That's not that's not easy on anybody. No, of course, yeah. Uh, but you know, like you said, you, you're you know you're still kind of involved with whatever else. But this year, you also uh, you released a book. It's called Meet Dave Sullivan. Uh, why yeah. why did you feel that now's the time, the right time to to release a book? I'm going to be honest with you. I was at a, cause I played at UNO and my head coach was there and he wrote a book, The Riverboat Gambler. And he just, you know, Bill, with your life history, you should write a book. And so I decided to try it and do it. So it ended up coming together and we put it together, John Fy and I did, and got it out there. So it's just, it's kind of Coach Sandy Buddha's suggestion, honestly and truly. Yeah. I mean, I, I love it because I'm a huge book guy. I have a huge book clutch. I, I, I love books. I, so I, I think it's real important. When guys who are in public positions and, and prominent positions that you know they they document that right, tell their side of the story, and um and, and get that down and and you know and document it, and, and I suspect then with the book release and and you know the fact that you look back on your career that we can see maybe maybe you making some more more appearances right at conventions and different things in the future, uh, is that yes. kind of, is kind of in the plans that you'd like to get out there and, and do a lot of conventions and and obviously plug the book but kind of. Touch back in with the fans, right? Because like you said, you were coaching us stuff. There was a period where you you weren't real public. Right. Very true. Yeah, I would like to do some of that. Yes. Yes. And, uh, so, do more books on. Yeah. Well, well, so how can fans, how can they follow you? And if they want to keep, I mean, I know the books, the books available wherever, right? They can go on Amazon and, and, and mm -hmm. get go, that just book go to meet Dave, meet, meet Dave Sullivan and get the book there. And yeah. then they can follow me on my Facebook says Facebook page, 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 just like you did. Bill yeah, Sullivan. Bill Sullivan, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you can follow me there and uh and and we can talk more. I mean, I just I I've kind of hoping I get on this convention circuit and go to these things and see a lot of more of my fans again. Yeah, I imagine you will, right? There's a lot of that's it's kind of a big thing now, some of these conventions and, and everything else. So oh yeah. Uh, I, I'd like, you know, I I foresee that you'll 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 get the opportunities and, and pop up. I mean, you've got a lot, like I said, people were they, they think of that WCW room, but there's so much more to your career besides that. And uh, you're kind of one of those guys that was at that unique position where you started in the territories, but that you were still going when it kind of crossed over, uh, right? And the territories kind of disappear, right? You you have that history in the Pacific Northwest and some of that stuff. So it's it's right. kind of you you kind of have both sides of it and can tell stories from both right. sides. Correct, and it's and you and I've met a lot of good people too, both fans yeah. and 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 and, and uh, wrestlers. Yeah. So real quick before we go here, talk. You, you talked about Roddy Piper, right? And he's obviously known for the Pacific Northwest. Even when he was one of the biggest stars in the world, he remembered right. his he was, doing, right? he was doing acting. He was doing acting and all that stuff at that time. He'd still come back. He'd yeah. never show up at the house shows, but he'd show up Saturday night for the arena shows, and he'd 
coach us all and talk to Don. He was still part of it and, and loved doing it. Loved, loved helping talent out. He was one of the finest. He's another fine human being that you met along the way that you really respect because he, you know, he just got done making a movie at the time. He was one of the top, the top heels around. So, I mean, and he was a gentleman, a scholar. He was a yeah. good guy. Yeah. I mean, that's what you, that's what you always hear about him, right? No matter how big he was, and he was big. I mean, he was, yeah. there, I will, I will forever say there, there's no Hulk and no Hulk Hogan without Roddy Piper. No, not, not with Piper's pit and all that stuff. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but even, <laughs> even then when he was on MTV and, and national TV and everything else, always remember Don Owens, always remember the Pacific North is where he came from, always helped out and did things. And, and, and those guys, and just such such a humble guy, uh, despite yeah, everything. And yeah. um, one of those guys that's man, it's like uh, I, you know, you always wish he was still around because he has such a positive influence in the business now. And uh, yeah, so well, I you know, Dave, I appreciate you you taking the time and, and coming on talking your too, career. Dave. Like, like I said, it's uh, everybody always thinks of you that run, but it's I think it's important to tell that. I mean, you have there's so much more to your career. And everybody can read that, that. If, if, if they go out and get the book, meet Dave Sullivan. I'm sure there's stories from, from the entire span of your career and, and, and mm-hmm. everything. And, um, and I, and I suspect there's, there's even more, right? I mean, even when you write a book or you do the you know, interviews or whatever else, there's always there's, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There's always stuff you remember at a later time. So that's You're why right. I suggest that if you pop up at a convention or whatever else that people go see you, cause there's, there, there's, there's more, right. There's always more to, to tell and talk. And, uh, Very true. I appreciate that. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, like we said, people can follow you, uh, Bill Bill Sullivan, on Facebook. Uh, that mm-hmm. can, if you have any appearances or anything else, they can uh, you'll you'll post them there. People can go mm-hmm. to Amazon or wherever, look up Meet Dave Sullivan, order the book. Uh, it's mm-hmm. pretty affordable. It's not you know I think it's the price point on Amazon. I think it was fifteen dollars or something like that. So it's very affordable. Right. And um, but uh, Dave, I appreciate you giving us the time talking to us appreciate about your you career. Too, Dave. And uh, maybe down the road we can follow up and, and, and dive a little more into some of your career. Sounds awesome, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, Wrestling Fans International Association is back. That's right, the premier fan club association of the 1970s and 1980s has been revived and is back in business. Join today. It's free at the WFIA.org. That's T H E W F I A.org. You can also join us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash groups slash WFIA 1969. All right. Welcome back to Wrestling Nostalgia. I am Dave Dynasty. Thank you to Dave Sullivan for coming on uh, for that interview. Uh, you know, Dave's a fascinating guy. He's done a lot of things. Uh, go check out his book, available now on Amazon. Meet Dave Sullivan. Go buy a copy. Uh, I'm sure there, there's lots of great stories in there, lots more things that we didn't really dive into because I want you guys to go get the book and read those and support Dave in, in that uh, endeavor. Uh, once again, go check out World Wrestling Association. Like their page on Facebook. Make sure you... Uh, Follow me on social media, kind of the central hub. The easiest way to do that is just to go to on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it, and follow me at the Dave Dynasty. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform. And if you can't get enough Dave Dynasty in your life, make sure you listen and subscribe to my other shows. I have uh, This Is Extreme, which is an ECW history podcast where we interview uh, lots of key figures in the history of ECW. Uh, so go subscribe to that. And if you are a fan of horror movies, go check out my horror movie podcast I do with Ike Isaacs called uh, Listen to Their Screams. We do movie reviews, play games on there, uh, talk about news, birthdays, anniversaries related to horror. Uh, lots of cool stuff. So go subscribe to those if you just can't get enough of me in your life. Uh, thank you for your support. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode. But until then, wherever you go and whatever you do, be good, be safe, and keep on growing.